All right, everyone, welcome to your 50th HTML5 tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to finally give this baby some functionality, making it work, making something happen whenever we click the Save button. So basically, like I said, what we're going to be doing is making a variable. Now, every variable has a name and a value. So right now, whenever we click this, nothing happens. But eventually, what we're going to be doing is setting this as the variable name, and this is the variable's value, and just displaying the information over here to verify that this program does indeed work. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So now that you got your HTML file and CSS file set up, hop over to your JavaScript file. Now the first thing that we want to do is a function that happens as soon as the window loads. This kind of kicks off everything. So just go ahead and on your window put add e event listener. Now this of course takes three parameters. The first one is load. When do we want this to happen? As soon as the window loads. What do we want to happen? Call a function called do first. Now we're going to be building that function in just a couple seconds. And the last parameter is false. And if you guys watch any of my previous tutorials, you know why. So basically, we want to call the function do first as soon as the window is done loading or the web page is done loading. So let me go ahead and build that function right now. Function do first. And this takes a parameter of nothing. In other words, don't. I'm just going to confuse you guys. <laughs> Don't even listen to me. Just uh, put this tutorial on mute and, you know, just follow along with it. This is probably your best bet. But anyways, the first thing we need to do is we need to reference this button right here. Now, we need to reference it because we need to say, okay, whenever they click this button, that's when we want to save the data. So, we need to reference that through a variable called button. I'm going to name it button. And how we do that is document get element by ID. Now, if we look, the ID of the button is button, so whenever we reference that ID, it knows that we're talking about this button right here. So get element by ID, and the ID of that is button. So now the variable button references this button right here. Simple enough. So now what we want to do is we want to add an event listener to that button because remember, an event listener is something that sits on an element in this case is going to sit on the button and wait until you perform an action to that button. So what action is it going to wait for? It's going to wait till we click that button. Now it says, okay, whenever you click that button, what do you want to do? Well, I just want to call a function called save crap. So it's basically a function that's going to save all the crap. So now let me go ahead and you're thinking, okay, well, where is that function? Is save crap built into JavaScript? No, they would never build a function that was named something so inappropriate. Only I would do that. So let's go ahead and build that function right now. Function save crap. So basically, whenever they click that bu button, this function is going to be called. Now remember, like I told you, what we're doing is we're going to be inserting two pieces of data in here. Whenever they click this button, it's going to call a function called save crap. What save crap is going to do is take the value of this, which is right now, I'll put like person in here, and the value of this, which is Bucky, and it's going to save basically a variable called person, and that variable is going to have the value of Bucky. So the first thing we need to do is we need to reference the contents of this. So we already know how to reference this entire element itself by get element by ID, because check it out. I'll say in a second what I'm talking about. One equals document get element by ID. Okay, so document get element by ID. And remember, this very first um, text area, the ID of it was one. So whenever we try to get element by ID and press one, it's not going to get the contents of here. What it's going to do is it's going to set this equal to this whole entire thing. But this whole entire thing isn't the variable. Only the contents of it is the variable. So we can't set it equal to document get element by ID one. We need to set it equal to document get element by ID one, the value of it. Because the value of basically a text area is the contents inside that area. So basically whatever we typed into that text box, it's now going to be stored in the variable one simple enough. So basically now one would be equal to the word person. So now we just need to do the exact same thing with another variable. 
So two and two. And here's another thing. You know how I told you guys that this first one was pretty much the key and the second one was pretty much the value, but I didn't want to name it key and value. Here is why I don't like naming any um, text area value when I'm working with the JavaScript because it already has a property called value. So if I put variable two equals document get element by ID value value, it may be kind of confusing, especially if I name this variable value. So that is why I chose the variable names one and two rather than key and value. I hope you understand. So now what I'm going to do is basically this. I have a variable all set up. This is the name of the variable one, and this is the value of the variable two. So how do I actually save it? Well, here is where we get to the good stuff. We use something called session storage. Now session storage is a class that's built in to HTML5. Now it has a method called set item. Now usually whenever we have methods that we don't or functions rather I guess are called in JavaScript that we don't usually see we're gonna need to build them ourselves but this function is actually built into HTML5. What it does is it takes two parameters in this case one and two it basically creates a variable that the user is going to store. Now the key of that variable is person and the value of that variable is Bucky. So it pretty much creates a variable with the variable's name being the first parameter and the variable's value being the second parameter. So typically, I think more technically, they're called keys instead of names, but I say variable names and the variable's value of, is of course the value. So what we did in this line of code is we basically created a variable that we're going to store on the user's computer. So now that we did that, I'm going to call one more function and that is, should I even do this in this tutorial? I think I'm going to save it to the next tutorial because I got a, one more function and one more line of code to go in this. But whenever I explain it, I want to explain it thoroughly and I don't want to run out of time or bore you guys. So go chill out. So all this knowledge in, go grab a hot pocket, some hot chocolate, some more hot stuff, come back when you're ready to learn and we're gonna be finishing up this program. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.